I promise you that I don't get into politics, but there is a bill, there is a bill called PRO Act. I really think you need to know. So we're bringing that here. We're not talking about politics. We just talk about the implementation possibility of what this bill is gonna bring to you if it came to life. Okay, so let's get going folks. And I will uh, share my uh, PowerPoint with you, uh, as you know, we really so you ask me, ah, what is a freelance? Freelance are the folks who work uh, for somebody or for some business, but receiving 1099 NEC, non-employment compensation. So if you're getting 1099, if you're filing Schedule C and you are freelance, it doesn't need to be the writers, freelance writers. That's what people, a lot of people know. But you could be a freelance accountant and you could be a free, freelance um, auto repair, you know, person. So geek workers are the workers coming through the app application. So when you, when you do things based on what app guides you to do, you're not talking to a real person like Uber drivers, like Lyfty people, you know, they are the one, uh, they're geek workers. So today we're going to talk about the relationship between ProAct and that, right? Of course, no responsibility disclaimer, no responsibility on whatever I say here. It is free service, but make sure and that's still a way to learn, you know? You can learn from any way, any angle, right or wrong, but when you learn it to yourself and you take that with a grain of salt and really make it suit you, that's the deal, right? Now let's look at what is PROACT. So that abbreviation, and I, I really don't like abbreviations because especially when you talk to, you know, IT folks, or you go to hospital, or you go to law firm, they have so many abbreviations, they make you feel really stupid because you just don't know what they're talking about. So let me translate that into Chinglish for you. It is protecting the right to organize bill. This is just a, this is a bill that the title is protecting the right to organize. Organize what? Union. Okay, so the legislation is designed to make forming labor union easier. So you may ask me, oh, what is labor union? Labor union, a trade union, is a organized group of people, workers, who unite to make decisions about conditions affecting their work. Labor union strive to bring economic justice to workplace and a social justice to our nation. So that's their mission. Basically, if you have, say if you are, if you belong to a union that I would just say, let's say they are uh, manufacturing uh, for, uh, for rubber wheels, they're union, unionized. So if you are, belongs to that union, the union will negotiate your pay, will make sure the work condition is good, otherwise you go on strike. So that, is what we know on the market. And you know that the union protects their workers, right? And two against the employers, the boss, the owners deed that against the workers. So that's the purpose of the union. Why are we talking about that? You know, you guys are tax people and I listen to your webinar because you tell me important things about my taxes. Why am I here? Why are you talking about PRO Act? Because the act, this one, will bring law changes regarding the definition of subcontractors, independent contractors versus employees. You got it? So whether you get W-2, you get 1099 NEC is can be potentially impacted big time by this act. That's why it is important to know what's going on, right? So what is 1099 NEC? I keep on talking about that. Contractors 
gig workers like the Uber drivers, they are gig workers, okay? Financial planners, you get 1099. And real estate brokers and agent, you got 1099, right? Those are the people and has something to do with this. So I want to show you this. This is the bill I just copied out of the internet. And you see the process? This tracker thing is important because when the bill got introduced, you know, it can die in the infancy, never become law, okay? But this one is gone through the house already. So the house already passed, now it going to Senate. You know, if Senate pass it, the president sign then become law. You see that? The steps, right? They're already here, got introduced. The, the, the person who sponsors the bill is, the, uh, is Representative Scott from Virginia. So he is the one and he is right here. And this is the gentleman and introduce the PRO Act 2021, 2021, okay? So now the PRO Act 2021, and this has, this is, this is the bill that will bring the largest modification to the existing bill that was enacted to become law in 1947. Make sense? So that would be this. This is what um, this is what the big changes for so much time gap in between, and now it's coming. The bill passed the House on March 9, twenty one, with a two hundred twenty five versus two hundred six vote, with five rep uh, with the five um, Republicans joined Democrats in favor of it. So. It did, it had a, had a Republican coming join the vote. And I don't know whether you look at, you know, on the internet, uh, Rubio, Senator Rubio, actually in support of this act, uh, I would say partially because he did want to see the working class get protected. At the same time, he think this act will further divide the adversary, uh, adversary between the employer and employee. So uh, sound like no good solutions in one bill, but this bill, the spirit of the bill he supports. So he's Republican. So how PRO Act makes the largest modification. I made a couple of points here for you. Number one, it has a five major provisions. I will go through the provision really quickly but it's introduced this ABC test. It is essentially uh, uh, a really important uh, text for making sure that, so this is a very important text to make sure that the, um, the government has a uniformed way to determine whether this person is a subcontractor, independent contractor, or it is a employee. So that is called ABC test. The bill includes overriding state right to work law, limiting the scope for laborers to work as independent contractors, limiting the state power, okay? So now the five provisions, I want to go through that really quickly because this is part of the PRO Act. But just remember those five provisions are the content of the PRO Act. But what really fundamentally important is how they define who is the employee, who is the subcontractor. Because if they are employee, obviously, most of those provisions one to five apply to them. So the spirit is the more the better, right? They want to classify more people into a employee status. So the number one, so the PRO Act would allow union to override such laws and to collect dues from those who opt out to not be a union member. So the, the act says that regardless your union number or not, and you will pay dues. And, um, you know, then of course, the definition of the employee also changed. So maybe even subcontractors, independent subcontractors would come in to pay union dues. That's provision number one. 
Provision number two, employer interference and influence in union elections would be forbidden. So if you are the if you are the the employer, you are the boss, you are the you are the leadership of the company, and you are you cannot influence union. You are forbidden to do that. So you don't you know in order to do that, in order to make sure the employer has no uh, no power over union. They are saying that you don't even have to have the union meeting in the business location. So you can take all of the worker outside of the factory, go some some hotels to have an uh, to have a meeting. So basically, that's what that says. And number three, and what is also says that to allow newly certified unions to seek arbitration and um, uh, mediation to settle a standoff in negotiation. You know how sometimes, you know, I have seen that a lot in Canada. You know, I'm from Canada. So the teacher unions, they go on strike. They want to raise salary by $3 per hour. And it's got, you know, shut down, no, no raise, no, no increase. So they don't teach, right? So the one, one semester, the whole of uh, the whole school got closed. And I, you know, my, you know, my husband is a university professor and he had gone through that twice in Canada. So it just don't teach because the union said no. And in such a standoff, and this particular PRO Act says that the newly certified union can come to help. So that, I really don't know what indication of that. So hopefully that means the standoff not gonna happen too much anymore, right? Number four, the law would prevent an employer from using its employees immigration status against them when determining the terms of their employment. So what that means is, you know, let's say if you have, if you are, uh, if you hired a person who is H1 status, immigration status, but is a unionized position. And so the H1 is only available three years. So you are not allowed to decide that this person's employment um, period is only three years because of the immigration status. You still have to go for, for five years and uh, without regarding whether this person is an immigrant or not, whether the visa is limiting them to work for one day or work for five days, right? So that is what that act trying to say, just trying to be fair and not to uh, use immigration status to determine the worker's uh, term of employment. Number five, so it would establish monetary penalties for companies and executives that violate workers' rights, monetary penalties. So if you are giving worker uh, a poor working condition and the, those working conditions now can be subject to monetary penalties to the company, okay? So these are the five things included in the, in the PRO Act. But what we are really working on right here is that with this PRO Act, they are defining who are their um, class they're trying to protect, right? So they're trying to say that you have to be an employee, you have to be a worker, you have to be in under the labor union, but independent contractor is not part of it. So what happened is in the act, they use ABC test to decide whether they should be included in the union or not. So what that is, is the ABC test is a legal test used by many states in employment related laws, such as for worker compensation and employment compensation to determine whether a worker is an employee or independent contractor. I think, you know, if you are, if you are in business, you probably already know that and your unemployment agency at the state would come to audit your record to find out whether you pay someone as a subcontractors. So that someone 
they would say, oh no, they're not subcontractors, they're employees because of one, two, three, four reasons, right? Then they will make you pay unemployment insurance, they'll make you pay social security, Medicare. So there's a whole bunch of catch up taxes you need to pay because you classify them wrong, right? So this is, I know the PRO Act is not trying to calculate taxes, but we're tax people. So we talk about everything that related to the tax. So here we go. So that ABC test we're talking about in PRO Act, that is to determine that, all right? So the ABC test gained its name in 2019 when California incorporated this into a worker classification law referred to as AB5 to enforce the employment law against gig workers like Ubers, Lyft, and classify their independence contractor status to be worker. However, listen to this. This is in 2019. They passed this AB5 assembly bill, uh, number five, maybe. I don't know the abbreviation. And they passed that bill to include Uber driver to be employee. That's in 2019. Um, then in uh, 2020, when the state gone through the general election in November, so the, um, they also passed a, um, they also passed a special rules related to that to correct what happened in 2019. That is called Proposition 22. So P-R-O-P 22, that's what they call Prop 22. And that was passed in November and with the election, it declares that app-based, app-based transportation company, such as uh, ride shares, food delivery company, Ubers, all of these, and are not subject to the uh, to become a employee. They are independent subcontractor. So you see in California, this ABC test was developed, but later on had a certain category was excluded. They don't really want to include those Uber drivers. Okay, so now let's look at what are those texts. That's, that's where you will, you will understand why it is so confusing, okay? The ABC test is a three-part rule to determine someone's status is either a employee or a subcontractor. So you use these three rules to decide, okay? So the all three rules, and number one, the worker is free from the control and direction of the hiring entity in connection with the performance of the work, both under the contract for performance of the work and in fact. So control a direction of the hiring entity. So what do you think about that? So let's, let's use, um, let's think of a company. Let's think of, um, let's think of a construction company, okay? Construction company has independent subcontractors. So control and the direction of the hiring company. So let's say I have a window construction company. So I have a job coming in and I'll hire people to get the window installed with the residential building. And do you think the subcontractor would not take any control? I, you know, you think I would not give, I would not control anything what the subcontractor is doing. You know, I probably control what they're doing. I tell them when to do it, how to do it. And that's a control and direction. So that is very vague. It's so up to interpretation. It's going to open up so many lawsuits if this thing get passed because it's not clear, okay? Then number two, the worker performs work that is outside of usual course of hiring company's business. What does that mean? That means, let's say, if I am, if you are a window construction company, right? You're, you're, you're installing windows. But let's say you hire someone who does, after the window installation, you hire this person to go in to clean up, shine the windows, you know, for your customer. And do you consider that is outside the usual course of hiring company's business? Yes or no? Both ways, I say. Of course, cleaning is not their usual course of business, 
but cleaning windows, arguable, right? So there you go. So that is another standard. Then the third one, the worker is customarily engaged in the independently established trade occupation or business of the same nature as the involved in the work performed. What that, what that says is that if this kind of work is always customarily done by 1099 folks, so that opens up so many uncertainty. What does that mean? So that means if I have been paying these window contractors 1099 and in my industry, you know, I'm the only person in town in the state doing that. So my customary practice, it is my practice. So do I get okay to do that continue? So it just so there's not a lot of standards to give you. So the ABC test is in the PRO Act to allow a greater range of people. They're trying to get greater range of people to join the, to join the unions by classifying greater number of people, including many independent contractors as employees for that purposes. Of course, the more employees, the better because they would charge a union dues. Remember the number one provision is that you can't choose, you have to pay union dues as long as you are, um, you know, as long as you are um, considered uh, labors that protected under this union. Now, so you will say, you know, many people raise concern of a euro course of business. What does the requirement that an independent contractor perform work outside of usual course of business of a company? Like, what do you require? Very vague. Where the only court ruling going to come to solve that? And the rulings tend to require the very the most strict descriptions of the business and of what it does. So it's really kind of you know this is just where it highlights the the confusion that people would would get involved once they under once they really trying to decide who they are. Now it's almost like the independent contractors are sitting on the you know, hot stove. They're like ends on the stove and they don't really know what to do because they could easily be told tomorrow you become employee, okay? So now let's look at potential ABC test implications. So more people participating in unions or eligible to become members, of course. So more people will be workers. So they will be become union members. Union would be able to increase their membership, gain revenue through dues, of course, right? More, more uh, labor uh, unions, members, more dues. And you can potentially have a union full of independent contractors. Yes, yes. So again, employer, to reevaluate their workers. There are many people misclassified as contractors who are actually employees. That is true. I sometimes even see that happens in the restaurant because in the restaurant industry, uh, we all know that the difference between independent contractor and the employee are what? The, being the employees, they're qualifying for medical insurance they're qualified for the benefit packages. They're qualified for retirement plan. They're qualified for social security, Medicare. So there's a whole slew of benefit that comes with being an employee. But if you're an independent contractor, you be, you be, you'll be working your whole life. Then at the time of retire and you suddenly realize that you have no retirement. That's very true, okay? So in some of those restaurants, they really should not have any subcontractors or independent contractors, but they would have people under that category. So those are misclassification, that's wrong. So we knew that that's wrong. So the, you know, the, the I guess the, the lawmakers know there are things like that happens. So they want to correct that, but can they correct that with such a broad change to the concept or to the definition of subcontractors and employee. I am not a politician. I really don't know. In my 
in my opinion, that is a very dangerous path to go down. Just simply knowing how many small businesses are small businesses because of the independent contractor work. So, of course, logically, PRO Act would need to resolve those legal conflict um, around the labor definition, right? And those uh, definition are defined with different federal governments. So a couple examples would be IRS defining them differently from ABC test, okay? Department of Labor define them differently. And the state laws also have them all different. Then of course, Title VII of Civil Rights Act of 1964. So all of these conflict need to be union unionized. They should unionize concept first and before they come through to pass this bill. I really hope that someone think more before they pass the bill. So now let's talk about our competency. So what do we know about taxes if this thing coming into play? So tax advantage. Working as an independent contractors means that you can operate like a business, right? You can deduct your business expense. For example, if I work as a subcontractor and selling insurance, and my home office, my car, and my computer, my paper, and my insurance for more practice, all of these coming into against my 1099 income. So I pay less taxes on my earning because I'm paying it under net profit. I'm not paying it on 1099 numbers, right? So that was the tax advantage as being independent contractor. The tax act and the job, the tax cut and job act, that's the Trump's reform, eliminated employee deduction for non-reimbursable business expense. So did you know that? You probably didn't even realize. And if you are a W-2 employee, Let's say you are a W-2 employee for a company. And in 2020, you didn't even go to work. You were working from home. Do you use your utility at home? You say, yes, I did. Did you use your internet at home? You said, of course I did. And did you get deduction for home office because of you worked at home? The answer is no, because that reform eliminated it. So if you are W-2, you don't get that deduction. It doesn't matter. You use your whole house for business. It doesn't matter. So because you're not, a business, you're not an independent contractor, so you lose that right to deduct, okay? So having said this two point, I want to say that there is a huge reasons why independent contractors are independent contractors, why W-2s are W-2s, right? And the IRS view on union dues. So independent contractor who works as a part of the union, and if they are under the unions and paying union dues, IRS could easily come out to define you as an employee. They would, because if you are not a employee, you will not pay union dues. You know, if you do pay union dues, how could you not employee? So. You know, there is saying there there are talks about oh IRS will not do that, and they know that you have been 1099 all the time. I mean, let me tell you something else. So if you recall the merchant account, remember long ago, the credit card when you when you in business when you charge clients by credit card, and you pay by credit card, and the, the IRS don't receive that form called 1099K. The IRS don't know that number, how much you process through merchant account. So they implemented that 1099K. So now merchant companies has to send to IRS off a list of how much you charge your customer by credit card. And when they developed that, it was part of an implementation on the merchant account side. It has nothing to do with business owners. But they also, IRS also said that they're not gonna use that for doing anything with business owners. 
that was literally a joke. They of course use that. They not only use that for tax purposes, they use that for even during the pandemic time when you apply for PPP, um, RRF, sheltered venue, sheltered venue grants, a lot of those government grants, they ask you for 1099K. So having said that, anything that implemented into law has a ground to stand. So they will use that for whatever rules and the regulations or directions they want to go to. So making everybody an employee, if you pay union due, oh yes, I can see that happen very quickly if that is the way, okay? Business owners, if the employer pays it, um, places safe and the change your status, change the person's status from subcontractors to employee. And of course, IRS will always accept that. But your worker, the person you change that status with may not like it because they know how much more taxes they will pay. They know they will miss out all the business related to deductions that they used to deduct. So those in favor, those in favor of the PRO Act says that, oh, it would protect um, empower workers to, ex to exercise freedom to organize a bargain, including independent contractors and who would be able to participate because they can bargain to the employer. And they also say that many Americans would join the union if given the chance, if there were no anti-union attacks. So, you know, if we can have a good attitude towards to unionizing things, then a lot of American people would love it. That's the, the people who support the bill would say, uh, more union activities, collective bargaining can mean better benefits and reduced income disparities. So, you know, so the, so the bosses don't make so much money and leaving the worker with nothing, you know, so that would not happen. Um, so this PRO Act will protect that. The PRO Act would also make independent contractors eventually get access to pension, 401k, retirement funds and other benefits because they become workers. So they have all these benefits. Then the businesses who are solely reliant on independent contractors may be ill-equipped to run a business. So what it says that PRO Act will get rid of those businesses who are only survival because they don't pay their people properly. They are saving the social security benefit, the Medicare, the, the health care. So that's what it means, uh, ill-equipped to run a business. So maybe many businesses are just not running very profitable. So they, they do subcontractors. So they're saying that getting rid of those businesses. So those who oppose the bill, the one who against the Pro Act would say that it would force workers to pay union dues, even though they're not active member, which is true. And uh, it may force W-2 status on independent contractor is certainly true. Collective bargaining agreement often have seniority system. So what it says here is that if you unionize independent contractors, so when they bid on the work, they are no longer going by the price because the price has to be fair. We, we all gonna charge that person the same price, but then we will go by who is in business for longer time. So that's what it says. So, um, you know, those who don't agree with the bill would say that that just, you know, that just make, take away the competitive edge of some uh, upcoming new businesses, basically. So if a workplace is unionized, the long-term freelance contractors would be, would be unable to negotiate special contracts. So if you are unionized, the subcontractors, so those ones who always get the contract because they have experience or whatever, that will become a different story. So um, unionize in so many ways is to leverage, is, is trying to peanut butter approach um, benefit and the income. So this is where, this is the way of diminish the income disparities, right? 
to really build a commonwealth, like everybody equally wealthy kind of society. And it is actually a, a very much a theory of in heaven. I mean, so nobody hungry, everybody has enough. And also very common um, education in communist country and where everybody makes the same and no bosses and uh, just big government, right? Or even no government. I don't know whether communists need a government or not, but the theory is that everybody gets the same. And um, if everybody's equally hardworking, I totally agree. But the reality is I do not agree because the reality is that we are not equal in efforts of creating wealth. So we are all different. And some people putting efforts in other means and not creating wealth, but some people putting great efforts in creating wealth. So I, I just think that in the human society, peanut butter approach, hmm, such a great thinking, but may not be very easily um, accomplished. It would affect gig workers such as Uber drivers, obviously. Make them employee, good luck. What kind of payroll system Uber gonna run? And I, I think that we need a reform on payroll system before we can do this pro act. Independent contractors are now um, a big part of the economy, okay? And the many small business entities are built upon 1099 income. Am I right? I mean, I am so right because I do see what I see. And what I see is not a couple of people, it is 12,000 businesses. So yeah, I know uh, that is a, a correct statement. So uh, politics and the PRO Act. And this will go next to Senate. Likely, not to advance because of lack of Republican support. But under Trump administration, okay, this is, uh, so for Biden administration, and they are pushing uh, this, they're pushing PRO Act going forward. And uh, in Trump's administration, actually, uh, there were some effort between the White House and DOL trying to create a more business friendly definition for independent contractors, it didn't materialize. So it's, it's not there. And a part of the bill and would end up passing through Senate and make their way to the president, to President Biden. And he's, he's spoken in support of the act. So I quoted him here, let's see. I don't have his great voice, but I'll just uh, you know repeat that in my very good Chinglish. So as America works to recover from devastating challenges of deadly pandemic, uh, economic crisis, and the rocking on race that reveals deep disparity, we need to summon a new wave of worker power to create an economy that works for everyone by President Biden. So, so he is in spirit, support the bill, but I bet you that he sees what we are seeing and how profound that would change the economic world for us. So final thoughts, final thoughts. No one knows what PRO Act would do to our economy. So, you know, those projections, economist uh, predictions so many times, they just don't mean a lot for people like myself and we live every day, we just go to Hy-Vee shopping and realize everything increased price by 25%. So that's a lot of money for grocery. And I have, I have never really spent grocery shopping. I mean, normal grocery shopping. Hey folks, did you realize that it's doubled? Yeah, okay. So this one comes in, will we'll enhance that. So our small business, our lifestyle in America, it will, in America will change and with this. So from where I am sitting and the feeling through the grassroots feedbacks of our 12,000 clients. So I talked to my clients and my clients is the one that told me, hey, Ying, look at the PRO Act, get excited. So, you know, with that, and if 
redefine employee versus independent contractors status enacted through PRO Act, through this bill, it is an opportunity. It is an opportunity for many business owners to restructure your business. You know, I say opportunity because it is a challenge. And I, in Chinglish, challenge and opportunity is actually the same word. So I just picked one is more positive for American and way speaking, but in Chinglish is challenge. So it is a challenge and it is an opportunity for all of you to rethink how you do business if this one ever go through. Now I conclude my talk with you today and let's look at how you be in contact with us. So that's our phone number you can call and the cat, Catherine, I call her Kat. And she is the librarian behind these uh, research for me. And email her. And um, if you have any topics that you are interested and in, talk to uh, talk to Catherine, and we will prepare ourselves and share the knowledge with you. And this is where we are going to um, together make your business successful. Mm -hmm. And don't leave us and subscribe, hit the bell, and always know what we're doing and proactively growing your business with us. Talk to you again. Bye-bye.